to the Arabesque Sewing Studio and to video 3 of the tutorial series for the Sewing Space Station. Now in this video I'll be covering how to sew that front tool pocket with all its pockets in it and how to bind that tricky internal curve that you see on the front. So now we're going to move on to sewing the front pocket panel. So you're going to need to take your template for the front tool panel and your outer tool pocket and just have a think about if you've got like a pretty motif on here you can position this um, in a whole range of different ways uh, to pick up on different parts of this so I think I'll be happy with it being about like this so then you're just going to trace this along with your pen so I hold my fingers very close to the edge of my paper and this keeps the edge nice and rigid. And then I only move one hand at a time so that I make sure that it's not moving as I change my grip. So you don't need to make a durable template out of this, you can use the edge of the paper really quite effectively just by using your finger as a bit of a guide to keep that edge of that paper nice and rigid. So that one's ready to cut out and then just move on to this one. So. I would like to make mine straight with my quilting line so that's what I'm going to be focusing on here making sure everything's parallel So the next step I like to do before I cut these out, and this is going to depend on how densely you've quilted the panel that you've got, is I like to baste just inside this line all the way around the line that I've traced. And this is just going to prevent any of those edges getting caught up underneath um, as you, you're handling the panel and stitching it. And um, I'll do that with this one as well. So here we have all the pieces that we need for the front tool panel and the next thing we're going to sew is the inner tool pocket. So you'll notice you have two pieces here that are almost a square but not quite. So just make sure that you have the short side on the horizontal side and 
the long side on the vertical side. Now you're going to take your interfacing and you're going to align it on the left one you're going to align it to the left hand side so you'll see you've got a seam allowance gap around all the rest of it and on this side it's going to align to the raw edge. This piece is going to align on the opposite side to the right hand side. So you're going to take this to the iron and fuse it like this. So now you've got them fused you want to place them right sides together and make sure that this edge here where they're both aligned to the edge are meeting and this edge where they are not aligned but is also meeting. So you just go ahead and clip these together. And at the sewing machine, we're going to be stitching along this top edge, down this right hand side and along the bottom edge. And we're going to be leaving this side edge open. So now that you've stitched this, we're going to give it a press with the iron and then I'm going to trim close to the stitching here but not too close just a little triangle just to reduce the amount of bulk that's going to be in this corner uh, when we turn this right side out and then I'm just going to trim down about half of the seam allowance to also reduce a bit more of the bulk. So now you can go ahead and turn this right sides out. And just be careful to poke out these corners as best as you can. Now you can use, um, I don't recommend you using scissors, but this is all I've got here right at the moment. You can use a, a point turner just to push the corners out carefully, but uh, you do need to push your corners out if you'd like to have a nice pointy corner there. So then you're going to take your fingernail and just run it along those seams here, just to make sure that you're going to bring that stitching line right up to the top edge. So that's going to be right on the very edge of your pocket. So I like to use my fingernail for this and then just roll that with my fingers and actually gives the ends a little bit of a tug because sometimes that can just pull in a little fraction. So just to help that all turn out square. And then you're going to grab your iron and then just set all that in place. Now keeping this with the raw edges on the left, I'm going to take this to the machine and top stitch along this top edge. Now if you haven't already gone ahead and transferred the markings from the template onto your front tool panel, um, I recommend you place your template back over this. I've just cut a little slit with my paper scissors um, on all three of these markings. And I can just mark that through with my pen. So now I've got three marks there. Now you're going to take this inner tool pocket with the top stitched edge at the top and the raw edges on the left hand side. And you're going to align that to the top marking that we have here. And you're just going to a few pins in here. Now I'll just try and do this without moving all the layers that you've got here. You want to be keeping this as flat as possible. So just double check that that is still aligned at that top corner there. Now we've just covered up this mark that we've made here so you can take your template again we're going to transfer this bottom mark onto this pocket. So we've still got these two marks 
and we're going to use them for aligning the front tool funnel. So we still have these two markings here and we're going to use them to align the outer pocket. Now the next thing we need to measure is across from the edge we want to measure about two inches or so in from the left hand edge. I'm going to rule a line that's going to be the stitching line that divides these two pockets. Now if you've got some specific tools that you think you'd like to actually put in this pocket, uh, you can move this line anywhere along here that you would like. So you can just hold the edge down and audition the tool there and just see how you like the width for it. And if you say you'd like a pen or something in this one, it doesn't work very well with my pin there. But you can see there's plenty of room for that. You can even fit a bulkier tool in there. So now we're going to put one more pin in here just to keep all this aligned. So we're going to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch down this right hand edge along the bottom edge and up the left hand edge and we're also going to stitch down the middle. So now you've stitched this inner tool pocket down. We're going to put this aside just for a minute. And we're going to bind this edge here. So this is one of the tricky parts in the pattern where you've got an internal curve here that we're going to bind. So my little trick that I like to do for internal curves when I'm working with binding, I'm actually going to snip into the seam allowance here, just around this curve. And it's, this is only probably less than, yeah, it's an eight, about an eighth of an inch. So you really don't want to be going any deeper than that. So take your length of binding, align the raw edge of the binding to the top raw edge of your panel here. And we're just going to overhang this just by a small amount here and clip this. Now I'm going to be putting just the slightest amount of pressure on this binding here. Not super amount of stretch but a little bit and as I come to this curve rather than bending my binding around here I'm actually going to be opening this curve out. Now this really is the trick to getting your binding looking nice and snug. And in a way, I almost don't like to, to clip it because it's all going to move as we get to it anyway. So you will have to just be going slow and stopping and reorganising everything. Now I'm going to stretch this just a little bit. So keep opening that curve out and 
stretching your binding just a fraction, pitching it with your fingers and popping another clip in. And what we're going to do, just like we did when we bound the top pocket panel, we're going to stop a quarter of an inch away from this top edge here. You're not completely going to know exactly where that's going to be until you get here because this is going to be stretching and moving just a little bit. But when you get a pretty good idea of where this is at, you're just going to take your ruler and you're going to measure a quarter of an inch away and just put a dot and that's going to show you exactly where you need to stop. So then we're going to fold this back at a 45 degree angle just like we did when we bound the other one and then fold this forward again and this is going to be parallel to this edge and then we'll re-clip this edge and we'll stitch across the top edge. So that's the steps that I'll be doing. I won't come back to the top down camera to show you this, I'll just show you this at the machine and you'll be able to follow along and see how I'm doing it. Okay, so now this edge is stitched and you might have noticed on that video where I sewed it down, I actually went back and I re-stitched uh, my first stitching line just to make the seam allowance a little bit more even because I was happy with the way that the edges met but I wasn't quite happy with my quarter inch seam allowance. So I went back and re-stitched it and just evened up uh, some of the seam allowance there. I know I'm quite happy with that and you'll see that this is standing up on this internal curve this is quite tight in here and, and that's the way it's meant to be so you're just going to trim off this excess here it doesn't have to be level just yet now I'm going to press this edge again so I like to do this just to get all my edges nice and up not bulging unevenly there. Now we're going to flip this round so the, the wrong side or the other side, whichever side you're on, is facing you. And now we can either clip this into place or glue baste it. So I'm going to glue baste mine because that's my preference here. I just run a bead of glue just inside that stitching line. So I'll just do this curved section first. Now you're just going to fold that back just so you've got that stitching line covered there. See from this side that's looking pretty good. Now I'll just do a little dry run just to fold that mitre down. It's going to meet really nicely. So get your glue again and fold that into place. Now I have no problem stitching over this glue um, with my sewing needle. Um, it doesn't gum up the needle and it doesn't make any sticky mess. It's just really easy to do. So now I'm going to go and stitch in the ditch again around the edge on this side. 
and this will catch it on the back and I know it's going to catch because I can't see any of my stitching line here so I've got enough of that covering that but that's going to be neat on both sides so now we've got both of these pieces ready we're ready to attach the outer tool pocket onto the front tool panel so just go ahead and trim off these little extra tabs of binding here so that they're level with the edge. Now make sure this is right side up and this is right side up and we're going to align this so that the curves are meeting here and your mark that you've marked here is meeting as well. Now you'll find that this panel is just slightly bigger than the panel underneath and the reason for this is that I would like you to be able to put bulky tools in here and so I've sort of given this just a little bit of extra stretch. So what you're going to be doing as you go around is just slightly stretching the pocket underneath. So just move this over and pull the ends edges together and this is just going to give you just a slightly bit more room in the top pocket here than you would if they were just uh, snugly fitting together so you can put plenty of clips on here So we're also going to stitch another pocket channel down this edge here. So you're going to stitch just inside this corner here all the way down to the bottom. So you can just take your ruler and roll a straight line And this is going to form a nice large channel here for um, large scissors or a rotary cutter and then this channel can stay open and this is great for pens or rulers or any other little notion tools that you would like to include. So now we're going to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to baste around these raw edges here and we're going to top stitch down this marked line here.